More bad news for Target. JP Morgan downgraded its rating of the retailer stock on Thursday after its two decade losing streak. And it follows controversy over its LGBT themed merchandise honoring Pride Month, which is celebrated in June every year. The bank is forecasting the new stock price to plummet from $182 down to $144. And Lego is now the latest company to follow suit, facing some backlash over its LGBT plus friendly blocks. Conservative consumers are in an uproar after an influencer dug up a year old pride campaign, which he claims is an effort by the toy maker to force transgenderism on children. In a now deleted tweet, Ollie London tweeted, quote, children's toy maker Lego has released an LGBTQI plus range featuring transgender building sets for kids age five plus. LEGO described the new range as a colorful alphabet of identities and definitions made from LEGO bricks. LEGO told the New York Post that London's claims are false and that the sets were created by LEGO fans and were not available for sale. I looked into this a little bit, Jessica, and it looks like that LEGO set with the rainbow has an 18 plus label on it. And the other sets that were tweeted out by Ollie um, were not available for sale. So I imagine that's why he deleted the tweet. That was not accurate. Um, but of course, that doesn't, uh, you know, get rid of the fact that Target apparently has this LGBTQ plus clothing line that is causing boycotts of its stores across the country. Yeah, it, it seems to me that this move by J.P. Morgan Chase is it a, a self fulfilling or self fulfilling prophecy to have analysts say, okay, well, like Target's under some hot water right now. There are definitely going to be some people that have said they're boycotting Target. Maybe this could uh, affect the value of their stock as well. We're, we didn't see uh, a dip in Target stock that was extremely dramatic in the last 24 hours. It was down like 0.73% trading. Uh, so is this analyst trying to project that because there's controversy in the news around Target that we do see the value potentially going to go down. Is this them using that news about Target and people's reaction to them selling LGBTQ plus merchandise? Is that them saying, oh, well, it's going to go down. But now this downgrade is going to make folks say, hey, OK, now I'm not going to invest in Target because they adjusted their position to neutral. But a lot of the reporting around this is making it seem like JP Morgan Chase is like, we should never buy Target stock, which maybe is political in itself for them to be doing something like this right now. Perhaps I would be surprised if JP Morgan is backing con socially conservative boycotts. Um, and we know that in prior years when conservatives tried to boycott companies like Nike, their stock actually went the opposite direction. They ended up being upgraded because there was a backlash from the left wing side who was supporting, for example, the company hiring Colin Kaepernick. In this case, though, Within a few days of people discovering the pride section at Target in the kids area, their market value dropped by about $9 billion. And this is also on the heels of this massive Bud Light boycott, which is still very much ongoing. There are retailers who sell Bud Light who are basically giving cases away for free or at significant rebates because people just don't want to buy it. I mean, you can go even to stores in Northern Virginia, which is a very liberal area, and Bud Light section completely full, every other year completely sold out. At least that's what I saw over Memorial Day weekend. I was on the golf course with my fiance and the cart girl was basically giving away Bud Light because no one wanted it. So I think JP Morgan's downgrading of the Target stock is probably more a recognition that these conservative boycotts are actually effective for the first time. Historically, conservatives were not good at boycotting. They kind of valued the convenience of shopping at certain companies or the product quality over um, whether or not the company abided by their moralistic values. And now that's kind of switched to the opposite direction. And I think it's because so many companies have adopted these pride campaigns that conservatives are kind of sick of it. They just want to shop somewhere that's politically neutral. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say a 0.73%, so a fraction of one percentage point decline in how Target stock was trading over the past 24 hours signals that they should reduce the price target from 182 to 144. I don't know if that's a signal that the boycott has been effective and uh, that is why Target stock is being downgraded. I think this is political posturing from JP Morgan Chase. We have Jamie Dimon who recently said, I want to be president. I just don't want to go through running for president. And he said in the past, my, uh, 
heart is Democrat, but my brain is Republican, something along those lines. I want to get that right. Yeah, my heart is Democrat, but my brain is Republican. I'm not sure what that means. I don't know where he falls on this issue, but it does seem to me like this is a dramatic position from the analysts. And we know that folks who trade stock on Wall Street have been able to manipulate stock values because of their risky futures trading. Uh, and so it could be a self-fulfilling prophecy intentionally from them that we're going to downgrade this stock as kind of a blowback for the political position they're taking and, and what they're doing this Pride Month. Yeah, we also have to consider that Jamie Dimon, if, even if he says he's a Republican at heart, he's certainly embraced environmental and social governance policy. He's embraced diversity, equi equity, and inclusion policies at J.P. Morgan. So he's pretty on board with the idea, I think, that companies should be taking moralistic positions and on political issues and trying to advance social justice and all of these other what we would, I guess, typically call woke corporatist type ideas. So I just would find it really surprising if he were doing this intentionally to damage Target or to send some kind of signal that he's on the side of the boycotts. Yeah, I think, uh, I don't know at this point how much our politics have changed. That was something he said back in 2019. Uh, who knows how he feels about the woke mind virus now? Uh, I don't know what it means for him to say my heart is uh, democratic, but or my brain is democratic, but my or my heart is democratic, brain is Republican. What does that mean? Is that just I'm socially liberal but fiscally conservative? Maybe, maybe we have a lot of folks in finance who who think that way. But to say he doesn't want to run for president, but he wants to be president means that he wants to influence what's going on in the country, which I think every single CEO believes. So this could just be coming from the analysts and have absolutely nothing to do with Jamie, uh, Jamie Diamond, Diamond entirely. This could just be the analyst saying, all right, we don't like what's happening with Target. We're actually going to use the news to make some projections about what we see happening here beyond what we've already seen in the market as evidence for Target stocks actually declining in the market. But I do think uh, such a, a big firm like JP Morgan Chase saying we're going to downgrade the stock rating is something that will influence the market more than it is analysts predicting what's going to happen in the market. It could also be Target's reaction to the boycotts that caused this reaction from analysts because there were a lot of closed door meetings, apparently, according to reports, where the Target CEO was trying to defend the pride line, but then agreed in especially southern states to move the line to the back of the stores or even remove it entirely in some of these places. And he also was trying to say um, that the reason that they were doing this was not because of boycotts, but because of apparently threats to employees and the idea that conservatives were going to commit violence against store employees of Target, which I thought was bizarre because why would you attack a, somebody who works there who obviously doesn't have any marketing power or decisions in the advertising department at Target? And then we found out that there were apparently bomb threats at several Target stores, but it was from LGBTQ plus supporters who were apparently angry that Target had moved the pride section to the back. So I just don't really buy Target's reasoning for moving the section. I think they're definitely listening to the money. They're understanding that the boycotts were incredibly effective against Bud Light. They know that a lot of suburban conservative women um, in particular shop at their stores, and now they're trying to justify it to avoid um, angering both sides, I guess. Yeah, I think this move of like, oh, we're not going to get rid of it. We're just going to put it in the back. Uh, <laughs> the two sides compromise solution oftentimes makes ab absolutely no one happy. Right. Right. The LGBTQ plus community is like, why is it in the back now? But still, the, the suburban white women who love shopping at Target are going to be like, hey, why is it still here? It's really making no one happy. And so Walmart has taken a stance and they said, we're not removing the Pride merchandise from our store. It's staying. And so I wonder what kind of response we're going to get from many folks who shop at Walmart. Walmart has become the store that people depend upon in this inflationary period. Their CEOs have said, we're Doug McMillan and people uh, who are close to Doug McMillan have said that 
what we're experiencing is actually an increase in our customer base during this inflationary period. And we hope to see that continue, kind of betting on inflation because it's good because they can offer low prices. And then among their loyal customer base that has been shopping at Walmart, they're seeing people shift more towards basic necessities. So people depend on Walmart economically today, but can they afford to boycott it? I'm not sure. Right. And I think the boycott at Target was fundamentally a little bit different because, I mean, the corporations over the past five years have always had pride collections. They change their logos on Twitter. They do this sort of social justice posturing. But what made Target's line different, I think, for a lot of people was the fact that it was basically targeting children and infants. Um, and some of the items that were found in the kids section contained um, tucking underwear and chest binders that would allow kids to basically present as a member of the opposite sex um, if they identify as transgender. And that crossed the line for a lot of people. I don't know if Walmart has similar products. I think if they do, then um, a boycott is very likely. Yeah, I'm not sure why anyone would be upset by those products being sold at Target. If there are people who have a use for those products or, or want them, we have a free market, right? Supply and demand. And if you don't want to shop at a store simply because they're meeting demand of a consumer that isn't you, fine, shop at another store. Threatening the employees is very extreme. I think projecting that Target is going to have such a, an extreme boycott that we need to downgrade their stock is also an extreme reaction to what's going on here. There are all kinds of like baby onesies uh, for boys in the baby blue that say like, future heartbreaker, like uh, future ladies man, right? All of these weird things that sexualize literal infants talking about what they'll be like when they're older. Uh, we don't see the same reaction to that than like a, a rainbow onesie. I think there are transgender people in our society. There always will be. I think it's just an antisocial position to say they shouldn't be allowed to buy clothes that make them feel good and allow them to express their identity. I think from the position of civil liberties, they should be allowed to do whatever they want to do. Well, we're talking about kids, though. I mean, that's a fundamentally different thing. They're not able to consent to a lot of the so-called treatments that the medical community is pushing on them, and especially um, in the case of actually marketing this material in a store, the reason that people have an issue with it is because you're basically taking children who are already in a vulnerable state. A lot of so-called transgender children have comorbidities like depression, anxiety, or even autism that leads to gender dysphoria, and they're in a confused uh, position. A lot of them uh, express the normal discomfort that people would have with puberty. And then they have teachers, corporations, the media telling them that something must be wrong with them and they're born in the wrong body. And then to go through irreversible procedures or take hormone therapy. So that's why people have an issue with it, because children can't reasonably consent to going through the process of a life altering decision to live as a member of the opposite sex. And in the case of the chest binders and the tucking underwear, there have been multiple cases where children who have been using chest binders have been unable to breathe because they wrap themselves too tight. They've been sent to the school nurse with bruising on their chest. These are not just harmless pieces of clothing. This is indicative of a larger social trend where kids who are struggling with mental health issues are told that the quick fix to their problems is to just become a member of the opposite sex. And I don't think it's right for a company to normalize that. I don't think Target is normalizing that by selling them clothes that they can pick out and they might want to wear. I think a lot of the depression and the suicide and the health effects of stress that we see very prevalent in the transgender community are because they're growing up in a society that is not accepting of them. And in fact, with the whole faction of the political party of the Republicans that has made transgender people their target, especially transgender children, that reality, I think, has produced the conditions where you see so many young transgender people who are depressed and who are thinking about suicide and are who are disproportionately committing suicide and are disproportionately the targets of violence. I think Target selling clothes that allow kids to tuck if they want to or express a different gender identity is not them 
than imposing any decision on the children. It's simply making the, the products available. It's not Target saying we support any kind of medical procedure. It's just them saying we recognize that you exist and there's a demand for these products, so we're going to sell them. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Chest binders giving kids bruises, kids break their arm playing soccer. If they want to wear the chest binder and maybe they get a bruise because they did it too tight, the next time they wear it a little bit looser and they learn that lesson. I think kids pursuing their identity uh, when it comes to gender shouldn't be seen as anything different than kids pursuing their identity by trying singing, trying playing soccer, trying to figure out who they are as a person. It's a part of their identity, but I think it's seen as taboo and strange because we've had such strict gender roles for so long in this country. And change is uncomfortable, but if it makes people happy and it's how they want to live their lives, it's something that I support and something I think the government has no role uh, in trying to dictate one way or another. Unfortunately, we have to leave it there. I know we could keep going on about this. There were so many points I wanted to respond to, but we'll be back with more Rising after this.